Hello everybody. Today we're going to do a video regarding um, ownership of snakes. New newbies geared mo mostly to newbies. Um, while I'm doing it, you're going to see me messing around with my two uh, Tarahumara mountain boas. They are dwarf locality species um, from the Sonoran Mountains, Tarahumara area of uh, Mexico. So that's what I'm doing now. They are fairly new. So anyways, get on towards this. Uh, first off, we're going to start out with deciding on the species of snake that you want. Most newbies to snake ownership are probably going to be pointed in the direction of corn snakes or ball pythons. That's typically what we see happening. But to be honest with you, you don't need to start there. Um, you just need to be educated on what you're going to be getting. I started out with uh, catching wild garter snakes um, around where I used to live. And, you know, I wouldn't call those pets. I kept them for a few days. Sometimes I'd feed them. Sometimes I'd let them go. Um, sometimes the animals would get them, cats or whatnot. You know, you do not need to start with a ball python or a corn snake. You need to be educated about what you're going to be getting. Um, ball pythons are pretty popular in the pet trade. If you go to some place like Petco or PetSmart or any any place like that, you're going to see them on sale for about 80 bucks, 80 to 120 dollars is what I usually see them for. You can get them from breeders, um, find them all over Craigslist. You know, everybody wants an adoption fee to ensure that they go to a good home, quote unquote. Um, they just want to make a little money. But generally, if you get them from a breeder, Triple L Reptiles, BHB Reptiles, and the Normals and whatnot, you can find them, you know, $20, 30 40 50 dollars. Of course, there's shipping charges applied to that, um, which is generally going to be around uh, 45 to 65 dollars. And we'll talk about shipping here in a little bit. Um, so first off, you need to decide what you want. Ball pythons pretty much sit there like a rock, a bump on a log sitting there in your hands, and they do almost nothing. Um, you know, they'll get used to you. They're pretty. They have all kinds of what they call paint jobs, uh, color morphs, and all that. So whenever somebody sits there and they talk about the snake is het for blah, 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 heterogeneous, that means that they, they carry the genes to make these different cool paint job patterns. Um, most people aren't into that when they're new. They might they might spend a little extra for something like that. Excuse me, my dog's in the way. Go sit down. Get out of here. I'm not talking to you. Why do you think I'm talking to you? Go lay down. Go lay down. Anyhow, okay, so right there I am just checking out the temperature of the snake. I'm not sure why I'm doing that. That's an infrared uh, with a laser pointer. So just so you know, that's very good for taking the temperature of your snake's habitats. Uh, we'll get into that later. So anyhow, decide on what you want. Corn snakes, ball pythons, boas, whatever it is, do your research on them. All right, so the next thing, once you decide what you actually want to have, the species that you want, uh, be it, you know, whatever it is, you need to actually start contracting, um, contacting the breeders, asking them questions. So once you settle on a breeder, um, that you want to buy it from, or a or a store, Triple L Reptiles, or whatever that is. It's just popping names off the top of my head. BHB Reptiles, um, individual breeders. You need to ask them what the husbandry is. Um, what are they keeping them in? What are the temperatures that they're keeping the animals in? Because the idea is that before they come, you are going to spend some time pre-prepping -pre for their arrival before they're ever ordered. Once you order them, generally they're going to be there within, you know, 18 to 24 hours. You're, you're going to have that snake. Um, I've never, almost everyone that I know of ships overnight express. So depending on where you're at, they're going to be there from anywhere from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, the next day from the time that they have the payment. Um, unless you schedule, you know, they don't ship over weekends, most of them, uh, unless you want to pay extra. By the way, as far as shipping goes, keep in mind that um, UPS does not allow the shipping of any snakes, period. So if somebody ships to you uh, via UPS, then they've shipped illegally. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so you want to make sure that before you actually get the reptile, the animal, that things are set up 
your temps are correct, your husbandry is correct. The husbandry is uh, what it's living in. So the tub that it lives in. And you see that I use tubs. Almost everybody does. A lot. Of, you know, anybody who wants to, because they're so much easier to keep the temperatures, um, the humidities, the security. It's much easier than a tub than it is in a uh, glass tank. Tubs kind of suck because you don't really get to enjoy them too much. The viewing and whatnot. I have two carpet pythons that right now they are in, I think they're 50 quart tubs, Ceralite tubs. I've got a couple of um, display cases on order. Well, one's already here, one's on order. So once I have those all together and put up, they will actually be put in those. Um, tub sizes are fine. The tub that you see in this video is a six quart, I believe, a six point something quart. It's a what's co commonly considered a shoebox tub. <coughs> the snake you can see by this by the size of the things that it's running around at it's pretty small um, maybe slightly over a foot these both of these uh, Tarahumara mountain boas are just over two months old so they're pretty small they'll only get up to be about mm, about four feet at the most the females are naturally bigger than the males if you don't know that with when it comes to snakes um, Females are almost always larger than the males due to needing to be able to uh, carry eggs or offspring. Speaking of offsprings, these guys are ovoviparous, meaning that they actually carry live young inside of them um, as opposed to egg bearing. Anyhow, so so next thing that you're going to be asking the breeders when you get a snake is you need to know what they're feeding them and how often because you need to have those things. Now, full disclosure here, when I got these guys, I didn't have uh, on hand just because I want to wait a few days uh, before I need to worry about feeding them. The breeder had said that she was going to feed them a couple of days. So they're going to go probably three or four days beyond what they normally would without food. Snakes do not eat every single day. Um, they eat as babies about once a week. Um, as they get older, at some point, you know, once they're adults, a couple of years from now, these guys will be feeding on whatever their their full size prey is once every two weeks or so. Um, that's just that's just normal for snakes growing. Eat more often. They do not eat every day. Um, what do you feed them? Most people uh, who have snakes are going to feed frozen thawed. Uh, or pre-killed. Pre-killed is if you keep your own, you gas them out in a CO2 chamber. Um, I won't get into feeding too much. Uh, I, most people anymore do not feed live. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about live feeding. Um, it's doable. You A, if the snake doesn't take it, there are some problems. The snake doesn't take the feed. You need to care for this animal. I guess you could kill it and uh, put it in the freezer or whatnot, but you know, you really need to be prepared for taking care of the animals. You can't leave them in with the snake. They will kill snakes. Rats will eat snakes. Um, maybe not for a meal. Although, yeah, I mean, there. if you look on the internet, there's plenty of, it, of uh, pictures and videos and whatnot of people who've come back to their, typically a ball python that they've left some rat in there, thought it was really cute. Uh, let thing in overnight, and they came back to a snake that's been chewed half to death. Um, had to be put down later. So you don't want to leave them in there. The other thing about feeding live is that it is brutal. You know, um, some people, you know, it, you get a kick out of it. You see it on the nature shows and they have all this dun 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 dun, dun music and all this great music. But the fact, the reality is, is that it's brutal. Um, when the snake hits, the animal will scream, uh, not the snake, the rat or whatever. They'll scream, uh, eyeballs will pop, blood will squirt out of their back end, uh, not every time. But you've got to remember that these animals are powerful enough to constrict to such a degree that they restrict blood flow. It's not just strangulation. There's been new studies come up recently about how boa constrictors kill. So constrictors in general, they are not just simply uh, wrapping themselves around um, <coughs> around the around the neck or whatever and choking them to death they are cutting off blood flow i mean imagine how powerful you need to be to cut off blood flow so yeah that's why most people don't feed live um not just because of the brutality but because 
of the issues of keeping those things around. Okay, so you've now you now know what the breeder's feeding, how often. You need to make sure that you get the cost details. Obviously, you know what am I getting for what I'm paying for? How much is it going to cost me? Um, feeding cost details. Is shipping included? Yes or no? Shipping isn't always included. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. Make sure you know that um, before you make a payment. You know, I, I made that mistake. Well, hold on. You're going to see this pissed off boa right now. Here we go. So the boa is a little mad here in the, uh, the video. Um, this is the second time handling her. So anyways, right back to the hook training. Um, you know, I'm not going to talk too much about that. I'll talk about it a little bit of the video. So then you want to ask after you know what they are um, including for the cost of it. You want to know the shipping details. Um, you want to know what company they're shipping through. Like I said, if they're shipping through UPS, do not buy from them. It is illegal. Not illegal. Um, against UPS policies to ship snakes. So they need to ship through FedEx. Um, I'm not sure about uh, the United States Postal Service, but as far as I know, nobody actually uses them, so there must be a reason. Um, shipping is generally done through one or two um, shipping companies. Um, 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 not through the shipping company. Shipping is generally done through Federal Express, and it's generally done using a company called Reptile Express or ship your reptiles and basically what that allows is the breeder to ship under their name so those those companies so they can have everything handled all the special details I don't breed I don't ship so you want to know more about it you know look up um, Federal Express shipping policies or uh, ship your reptiles or reptile Express to get some details of that then after you have all the shipping details, uh, you want to find out the guarantees. Do they guarantee sex, health, um, how long is the guarantee for? Most of them that I know of you need to have. If there's an issue with your uh, reptile, they need to take, you need to have pictures, you need to have proof back to the breeders. With anywhere from two hours to, I think I've seen some that will allow you to do it within 12 hours. But generally you want to be done very rapidly. That's the other thing is that when you get them shipped, you need to be at home when they arrive. You Most of the time you need to sign for them, but you need to be at home when they arrive. They cannot sit out um, on your front porch for several hours or even 20 or 30 minutes. Um, all right, so the next thing, we talked about the shipping. Questions to ask. The pre-purchase is being ready when the reptile gets there, when the snake gets there. So you need to have your husbandry set up. You should already have done your research and know what they need. So do not try to bring a new snake in and then get its, its husbandry right. Make sure that that is on spot, on point, um, several days before the snake gets there. Simple as that. Um, make sure the temperatures are correct make sure that the husbandry overall is correct. The humidities, the bedding. Um, you see in this video right now, I don't have it in front of the camera, but before you saw that I had the aspen bedding down um, behind there right now in there, that's just a temporary box that I put them in um, when I'm cleaning uh, the cages out. Newspaper, I do use newspaper on my carpet pythons and I'll probably go back to uh, newspaper on these guys as well. Um, I just have the, the um, Aspen, so I figured I'd try it out and see how it goes. It, it works well, but um, I just prefer newspaper, and there's nothing wrong with that. They're not too picky. They really don't care what they're on. Keep them a hide, uh, proper temperatures, safe and secure, so forth and so on. So mainly what I'm doing in this video is I'm handling them. This is the second time handling them. Yesterday I handled them a little bit. Um, what I want to make sure that they are hand tame. So this is a female. She's a little bit more aggressive than the male is. See her body posture. She's cocked back. She's ready to go. Uh, the male, he was a little easier. I'm just nudging them around with the hooks and stuff. You know, keep them on the ground as much as possible. But I also want to be able to get my hands on them. Right now they are, you know, around a foot long. They are not going to hurt me. You know, they'll draw blood if they strike, but it's not a big deal. When they get four, 
four feet long, it's going to hurt a little bit more. It's not going to be too bad. But, you know, especially for a bigger snake, if you get something like a retic or a uh, bow constrictor, you know, a full size that gets eight, seven, eight, 12 feet, whatever, seven, eight, 10 feet, they're probably not going to get up to 12 feet. It's going to hurt a lot worse. So here she is. We got her. They have, notice her typical bow constrictor, uh, rectangular, tall and thin. Um, as opposed to round like a um, like the carpets would be or something like that I don't have the carpets in this video but I do keep carpet pythons so anyways as far as handling these guys go throughout the video you see me messing around with them uh, touching them with the hook getting them in my hands and whatnot um, let's just get them comfortable with me with the hook itself um, no well you don't see it here but sometimes in different parts of the video where they uh, they kind of cock back. I just put the hook gently on top of their heads, kind of move along their body. Um, hook training, I think, is pretty important for any of these animals. They are wild animals. That's something else that I kind of want to uh, make sure that people understand is that snakes are wild animals. They are not people. They're not little people. Um, they're not even dogs, which are still animals. So you will get bit by snakes. Um, you know, I can't count how many times I've turned around and been tagged by a snake that just seemed perfectly content to leave me alone. Um, you know, perfectly happy, and all of a sudden they turn around and bite you. It's just going to happen. So be prepared for it. Don't think that they are little people. They are not. They have a reptilian brain complex, um, which basically means that they their thought process, quote-unquote thought process, is, am I hungry? Am I full? Am I hot? Am I cold? Um, you know, am I in danger? Am I safe? So it's very, very basic. So keep that in mind um, with any snakes. Do not try to um, treat them like they're little people. They are not. So right here in this video, uh, I typically let the snakes go back in their tub on their own free will, quote unquote free will. I do encourage them back in but I try not to force them back in. You know, like a dog, I'll yell at the dog and make them get into the kennel without, without, um, without putting up with too much crap from them. With the snakes, I just try to let them go in there, especially when they're new, because I want them to feel secure. Anyhow, that wraps up this video now. If you have any questions, comment below, blah, blah, blah. Everybody have a great day. Thank you. God bless.